I wanted to do that. So this is, this is my hometown. Uh, this is beautiful Peebles. Um, it's a, a lovely place to live. It, for those of you who don't know, it's about an hour south of Edinburgh. Um, it's, the project is about the 1950s, and I say it hasn't yet started yet. And as you would have heard, um, I'm part of the University of the Third Age, and I don't know how many of you know about the U3A, but um, it's about lifelong learning. Uh, it's about um, self-guided learning. Um, we learn from one another. I mean, I failed my history GCSE, and I facilitate the local history group, so you can you can see how self uh, self facilitated we are. Um, believe it or not, most people think it is a group for um, us people of a certain age who are past past work, but no longer not past it. Um, but actually, there is no minimum age. But having said that, uh, if you look at the hair of the people in the local history group, you'll see that we're, we're a fine bunch of grey-haired people. And th this, is the, this is my local history group. This is the group I facilitate. Uh, in its usual location in the upper room of a pub, um, which they let us have for nothing. So we, as, long as, we, as long as we buy a cup of coffee or you know, the occasional gin and tonic. Um, we're uh, a, a group of, um, of wide... There's probably probably 35 years age range between us. The, the lady at this end, Joyce, uh, I went to her 90th birthday party um, in June. Uh, she's one of our best researchers. Uh, we had a, a talk from her. She dragged her daughter around the streets of uh, people looking for toll booths um, and taking photos of them and still gets nervous and can't sleep before she presents papers to us. So, so that's the group. Uh, in terms of the U3A itself, there are about a thousand uh, across the UK, so it's, it's quite a wide-ranging group. Uh, we try to be inclusive, you know, we, we do visits and so on, so uh, we, do, we don't just want people who sit down and do uh, academic papers. So it's, 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 it's going. Now, she says turning over the wrong page. This, this is about, people say, you know, how do you eat an elephant? How do you tackle something as big as community engagement? And I think one of the things we say is, well, it's one bite at a time. Well, it is one bite at a time. But there's also a lot of other skills, I think, involved in eating an elephant. And I speak here as a, a vegetarian. I mean, you need good planning, I think, to eat an elephant. You need a bit of stamina to get an elephant going. You need definitely need an appetite, you need determination, you need lots of help and you definitely need good cooks and I'm sure you could add loads of things in there and that's really um, you know, what, what I wanted to, to think about today and one of the things that helps uh, to eat an elephant is if you can prove you've eaten a smaller elephant, not a baby elephant, that would be very <laughs> cool, but a smaller elephant. If you can say that you've tackled these things before and you can prove to the people that you're trying to get help from, that you've succeeded, then I think it makes the bigger elephant a lot easier to tackle. And this is our smaller elephant. Last year, our group uh, put on a one-day event in the local church hall called Travelling Time in Tweeddale. And we, we've had a whole day, as it says, of... Uh, walks, talks, films, demonstrations and displays. So uh, if some pictures here. There's some people uh, having a look at some of the displays and people listening to the talks. Uh, we had a local farrier come along um, and shoe horses and show us how that got done, which uh, gained a great deal of interest. The local newspaper loved it. We had two whole pages of coverage. Um, we, we had more coverage than the uh, Island Games, which was on the same day, which was quite good. Um, we had 400 people through the door that day, you know, in, in one day. And, for example, um, we had uh, a talk about the drove roads nearby, the local ramblers took people on the drove roads for a walk after that talk. So, so we tied all these things in. The local theatre group dressed up as Victorian 
people and read extracts from the, um, the people she knew at the time. Uh, it, it worked really well. Um, and the total cost of that was £150. And that included the hire of the hall and uh, the insurance for the... Um, because I used to work for the health and safety executive. The insurance for the farrier with his um, flaming uh, ball shoes. This year we've been uh, more ambitious... And um, because of the success that we've had, uh, the local museum uh, has, it wanted to build on what we were doing. And so we now have a three, months, a three month exhibition uh, at the local museum, uh, which is all based on the research that the group, that small group that you saw earlier, has been doing. Um, and I wanted to just um, talk about, you know, what, what, what is the 50s? What was the 50s like? So, the question mark bit, you know, here we've got, you know, rationing was still in. Uh, people were very concerned about the nuclear issue. There's a lot of reference, uh, even in the local papers, to um, the nuclear issue. The first bit of a motorway was opened in the 1950s. I actually remember going on that. It's really exciting, Preston Bypass, on the way up to Morecambe for holidays. Um, so there we are, um, the introduction of the new motorway signs. Uh, people gathered round, not many people, 1950s when uh, the television arrived in Peebles, gathered round a tiny television set. Um, you know, uh, there's, a bit of, there's a clip in the local newspaper talking about how untidy all these aerials look and heaven help us when the working class get hold of television because the place is going to be a shambles and, and things like that. Um, and then, you know, the bursts into colour of a rather vampiric-looking uh, Cliff Richard mm. there. Um, and things like the lyrics of Living Doll, you know, he's, he's going to lock her, his girlfriend up in a trunk so no big hunk can steal her away from him. We wouldn't have any lyrics like that these days, would we? Not what you associate with Cliff Richard, really, is it? <laughs> uh, um, and then, uh, to put a personal slant on it, um, there I am next to my dad uh, at the end of the 50s um, with my dad my great uncle Edwin's car we couldn't afford a car of course um, but we used to go for day trips and take you know, corned beef sandwiches out corned beef and tomato sandwiches out on these things my brother a baby in arms and in, in my mum's arms there so we, we really are talking about living history you know and one of the um, uh, people in the group, in fact Joyce, when I said, oh, what, what are you going to do, Joyce, for, for the 50s, said, um, well, I thought I'd look out my wedding dress. And you think, well, it's, you know, we, we really have got, uh, got local stuff going there. Um, the, uh, yeah, let's go down, there we are. So change the, uh, the order of the size there, never mind. The, this, this, is the, this is the Chambers Institute. This is the where the museum is. Um, and that's where we'll be holding our, um, our exhibition. And it was a real boost to know that uh, they wanted to use our research to, to, to do that. Uh, it seems, am, am I going backwards? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. Uh, so one of the things that's happened was that we had um, a training session for SUP. Uh, they came along, you see the, the same location, top room of the pub. Um, and this was absolutely great because it gave people uh, the confidence uh, that what they were doing was important um, and sort of honed up people's research skills. And we started off with our group um, as, um, uh, you know, as the people who received that training, the days a day of training, but we opened it up to the local community and we picked up two or three members then. And it also drew attention and uh, made people want to be part of what we were doing um, in the town. So uh, that, that was very useful for us. And people got really excited about it, it was really good. <clears throat> um, now, I've come from a background where you do a lot of planning and you know, you have. And missions and visions and 
you know, you, you do different stages of things. It, it's very kind of popular. But when you're doing something like this, my main advice is to say, well, tie it all up in a news release. Sit down and think about what you really want to do and how you're going to achieve it and what it's going to look like and write it. Um, this this uh, statement I took to all the groups I could think of and sent to all the groups I could think of within, uh, within Peebles to try and get them engaged with it. You know, it's an upbeat, it's... This is what it's going to look like. This is what you're going to be part of. And that was written before anything was in place. I mean, that was just what, what I was going to aim for. And that, that statement just goes everywhere. It's just really useful to have something that tells you what you're going to aim for and what it's going to look like to share around people. I really do recommend uh, that you do that. Um, that statement was the start of hundreds of cups of coffee and emails. I mean, it's really difficult if you're going to try and engage with people. Uh, you know, you, need, you set up meetings, then they can't make it, and then they can't make the dates that you want. And then, you, you know, you just need to, you just have to plug in there. So, you know, luckily we've got one or two nice coffee shops, and, you know, I did, I did spend a lot of time in coffee shops. I'm setting this up. So our contribution then uh, to the exhibition itself uh, will be uh, the group decided uh, that it was what, what topics it, they as individuals wanted to look at. So we're not prescriptive. We don't say you will do these things. So what is it that interests you? What engages you as an individual? And these were the things that uh, people within the group were engaged by and wanted to uh, look at. So. Um, we've got the Beltane, we've got two Beltane queens uh, in our organisation. So they wanted to get out the, um, the cuttings and talk about the history of the ridings and the Beltane uh, within um, uh, Peebles. Uh, we've got someone who's very keen to look at the role of women um, and prominent women uh, within uh, Peebles. So she's gone away and she uh, gave us a talk on that last week uh, within the group, so she's contributed that. Um, We've got someone looking at the politics of the time, both locally and nationally. Uh, we've got a local take on the NHS, you know, what, where were the hospitals, what was going on, um, where were they, you know, injections, nurses and so on in the local area, and, and interviewing local nurses from the time. Someone who's interested in the buildings themselves, you know, what's, what's gone, what was built. You know, we've got council estates that were built around then. You've know, got things that were knocked down. Um, we've got photos of then and now, just just being produced at the moment. You know where the stations have gone. Um, you know when the, when the uh, stations closed down, when the, the train lines closed down, and you know just the way that transformed the town. And someone looking at the kind of employment that went on. We've got some ex-mill workers uh, in the group, so they're interested in doing that. Uh, as well as that, um, we'll be recording people's memories. Uh, that will feature in the events, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, but also, we've tied up with the um, museum so that the person looking after uh, the exhibition uh, will record memories there and then. So if people go around and see things that prompt memories, they'll sit down with the receptionist and, and record things there and then. Someone producing a national and local timeline uh, so we can put it all in context. Uh, we've got someone in the group who, I mean, she's got the smallest house, it must all be in the attic, but she's produced her song sheet from school and her 1952 um, album she had for Christmas. So we've got this richness of um, artefacts that has come from the local group. Uh, on the radio side, we're out of um, copyright for radio, so you can come along and... Uh, we'll, we'll have recordings going on all the time in the exhibition of you know, Listen with Mother and the wooden tops and all those things that, uh, that just, you just start singing the minute you hear them. I'm sure they, that you've got them from your childhood too. Um, and a quiz based on that. Um, we have um, contacts with someone whose father was a station master uh, in Peebles and uh, he was a child uh, during the 50s and that, that was a very um, popular talk in our last um, travelling time. 
So we're going to have, there'll be an interview with him. We do an interview with him. And he talks about the 50s and the railways. And, and then, again, extracts from the local papers um, talking about you know, the response of local people to national events, um, of which you know, there are many significant ones in the 50s, like the coronation and the death of the king, uh, but also you know, the, the local adverts and you know, the price of corsets in the sale at Jenner's, you know, and these things like that. So all, all very interesting stuff. And the other uh, thing that we are tying up with um, the, the, the ongoing exhibition, which will have lots of artifacts, are three event days. And this is really to get the local community interested and, and along there with us. Um, so we've had, um, these, are our, these are our friends we invited along to, to, eat the, um, to eat the elephant, if you like. Um, we've had help from the National Library of Scotland uh, Borders Sound Archives um, have been there with us um, providing stuff. People's Library are curating some of the um, readings, so we're going to have readings from 1950s authors on certain days. Um, we've got People's Civic Society who are obviously interested in the, in the buildings at that time and you know, invite us along to talk at, our, at their meetings about what we're doing. Um, we've got singing groups that are coming along to sing us the songs uh, of the 50s or, or um, the musicals of the 50s, and they'll be there at, at different events. Uh, we've got um, some groups coming along to teach people to jive and do the dances of the 50s, and that, w that will be in the museum. I mean, I don't know if anyone's ever danced in the Chambers Institute before, but mm -hmm. um, they'll certainly be you know, rocking them in the aisles in uh, soon. Um, then there's, uh, we're, we're going to do some outreach and go to care homes and take some, some bits and pieces and um, you know, hopefully record some memories there. Uh, there's a group called the Bletherers, which is a Facebook group, which is a, a, a group of people who, um, and I'm sure you've seen this stuff, but it, it disappears instantly and it's, it's just a crying shame. You know, there's, anyone recognise this picture and then it's gone, you know, and you never see it again. So. Uh, we will engage those people and they'll, they'll hopefully come along and be part of it. Uh, the U3A will support us um, as an organisation. Locally, we're going to try and get some stuff going. I mean, they'll be a longer, most of them will remember the 50s. Uh, but they'll also be doing things like um, uh, watching films of the 50s. So the individual groups, you know, everything from poetry to you know, philosophy to table tennis. So there'll be a, a 50s theme to some of that. And the SUP who've given us the training and have loaned us equipment to do the, um, the oral history recording, for which we are very grateful. Uh, three at the bottom are the failures, um, as far as I was concerned. Um, I got everyone else involved, uh, but I wanted to do a pub quiz based on the 50s, and I couldn't get a pub that was prepared to do that with me. Uh, the theatre, um, I didn't manage... the. the, the it's a long story, but the theatre weren't able to do anything. And I wanted to get like an antiques roadshow kind of thing going with the local auction house, but I couldn't get them interested in that either. Uh, but we might have Buddy Holly uh, visiting us to have a look at our exhibition because we've got a, an impersonator coming. <laughs> uh, quite coincidentally, um, the, the theatre were under the impression that he was a 1960s person, which I thought was a bit odd, but never mind. <laughs> So that's, that's our contribution, um, and that's not far away. You know, we're less than a month away from the start of that. Um, and obviously, you know, things are still developing. For me this time, it's great, because I don't have to worry about insurance. Um, I don't have to worry about the venue and getting the venue and putting the venue to pe you know, right and taking everything down all within a day. Um, you know, there's this uh, other person um, doing all that, so that's fantastic. Um, but please do come and see us. Please come and spend some time uh, looking at our exhibition or learning to jive. And th those are the dates which I can send to you. And I don't know if that was 15 minutes. But... Okay.